species keeps him on the trail of ever more specialist collectors. Happy days, we'll have it. And his relentless search occasionally comes up trumps in the most unlikely places. There's old box full. <gasps> Look at this. The well-heeled Surrey town of Farnham originally sprang up around a 12th century castle. It is very, very beautiful around here. Yeah, it's lovely. And also extremely expensive. Yes. In a nearby forest is the Pride of the Valley Sculpture Park, which showcases over 650 contemporary artworks. Over 10 acres, architectural, abstract and decorative statuary, upscale garden furniture and much more besides can be viewed and bought. Not what I expected. I expected a field with a few bits dotted around it, not the uh, expansive and really quite beautiful setting that it's in. It's in this sort of dingly dell forest thing that they've created. It's all been collected by entrepreneur, antique hoarder and art collector Eddie Powell. I suppose the philosophy of the park is to offer a huge selection of sculpture to suit all tastes. I'm hoping to uh, get on well with Drew. We've met a few times in the past. Hello there. Eddie? Oh, hi. Good Drew, to see Pope. you again. How are you? Hi. Hi, see. Hi, Pete. How are you doing? Hello. Hello, who's this? That's Dennis. Dennis, hello, mate. How are you? Right, <laughs> can we have a look around? Yeah, sure. Marvelous. Things. Yeah, I've had a few of these in the past. Yeah. They'll generally be fairly good sellers, to be honest. Yeah, they're good. So, what we did start seeing around the place was these wonderful wooden benches. Now, these aren't very old, 20, 30 years old, and they're Asian, made from uh, tropical hardwoods, roughly cut into these, these rustic-styled benches. But they'd attained this wonderful silvered colour, which can only be got from sitting in the British countryside for decade after decade of rain and wind and frost. What would that cost me? <coughs> to you? Yeah. £350. On Salvage Hunter's Best Buys, Drew is looking back on the most impressive collections he's picked his way through. A 600 a lot. Yeah. At a Surrey sculpture park full of extraordinary artworks and creative flights of fancy, he's mesmerised by a wooden bench moulded from the natural shape of a tree. What, what would that cost me? <coughs> to you? Yeah. £350. Yeah, thank you very much. Quick. This garden chair in a teak frame built from tree limbs steamed and cut into a naive shape, is probably English and made in the 20th century. With impressive scale, it was worth around £1,150. I've only seen a few pieces. The best, the best that, in fact, was owned by a, a dealer pal of mine, which we've sold for over £20,000. These aren't that, but they look a bit like it. So I asked the price, 350 quid. Well, I could have fallen off the bench myself, I'd snapped his hand off. I've upset Dennis now by him to get him off it. <laughs> Sorry, Dennis, you lost your seat there, bud. We sold it for not hundreds, but thousands. Low thousands, but thousands nonetheless, because it looked dead right. Little table's good, too. Dennis has got good taste. £95. Pound. Marvelous. You don't get the dog. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Dog's priceless. <laughs> this is uh, amazing. Is one of... deeply impressive. Eddie, yes. Come, give, give us a price on this, please. Oh, not my family heirloom. A family heirloom that looks like it's been here about ten years, dumped. At least. At least. Another, I have to say, wonderful item was a early twentieth century cast lead birdbath of two pooties sat on the edge of this conch shell, pulling their shoes and socks off to wash their feet. Charming. 
it had damage underneath. But my word, was it attractive, hugely. This 20th century birdbath in an Italian Renaissance manner depicts two putti or cherubim in a seaside tableau perched on the edge of a conch shell. Cast in durable lead, this attractive piece was worth around £1,250. One off, £500. Thank you very much. A bargain. Yep. We did some work to it. It went for just over £1,000 for the thing finished. And garden antiques do this very strange thing. If you buy a really good piece and put it in your garden, it adds to the value of your house. So it's worth a hell of a lot more in your garden for whatever you paid for it. It's a good investment. Bath time. Yeah. Bath night, see? <laughs> Where are we going now? Up here? Yeah. Five minutes from the sculpture park is a separate yard where Eddie stores the stock for one of his other businesses, a collection of old and new bathroom fittings. I like what you've done with the place. <laughs> Ta-da! Lovely. Look at that. Blimey. All of the toilets in the world. And you had to walk into this one. Bog standard, though, isn't it? <laughs> Bit of a waste. Hey. <laughs> Eddie is a man of many talents and a, a true dealer, so we go to another property that he owns, and what Eddie done is bought the job lot stock bathroom wear, but he was making a very nice living out of it. Alongside his sanitary wares, Eddie also stores antiques. A couple of fairground chair boats. Oh, yeah, they're fun. Including a pair of 20th century fairground swing boats. What do you want for those? £200 each. And then beside them, Drew spots a real historical gem. These gates here as well. And pull the other one down. These for, these for going, yeah? Yeah. These have been on fire, you know. We don't need to charge a lot extra for, <laughs> for being burned. Original charcoal finish. Yeah. <laughs> the state of them. I think they're fantastic. These were made, I think, in the 17th century maybe the early part of the 18th century. They're English. They're what's sort of termed as a lich gate. They're oak. They were extraordinary. I mean, rarity doesn't even come into it. I've never seen a pair on the open market. They were always attached to a building. These were beautiful, absolutely beautiful. They should have been in a museum. This pair of oak lich gates in the Gothic manor were probably made in Sussex around the 1730s and would have been at the entrance to a churchyard. Although the metal or leaded glass that once filled the panels was lost, the majority of the gate's hardware was period. Warped, fire-scorched and almost entirely original, they were an extremely rare find that was worth around £1,500. I think they're fantastic. What do you want for them, then? Well, do, you want the, do you want the swing boats? How about 300 quid the lot? Two, four, five hundred. Four hundred for the lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I did a deal at four hundred pounds for the pair of gates and the boats. I'd have paid the four hundred for the for the gates alone. I thought they were. Ex I, I think they are extraordinary. I, I they're, they're just one of the the most interesting things I've found in years. Fabulous day at the sculpture park. Great fun. Unbelievable place. I mean, it really is unbelievable. Bought extraordinary things. You know, that's the beauty of this job. You get up in the morning, you don't know what you're going to do. You know you're going to go there and potentially maybe buy something, if it's available, but you don't know what you're going to find. Thank you, mate. Fabulous Forward. day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you again. Ta-da. Cheers. Staying in the home counties, it was a memorable day for Drew when he was offered first dibs on a very unusual private collection at Pangbourne in Berkshire. This is an entire country park that was huge and had acquired vast wealth. And um, with that wealth and with that space becomes the option to buy lots of things, and that's why we wanted to go. Near the village, which is said to have inspired Kenneth Graham's Wind in the Willows, on the River Thames is Beedle Wildlife Park, home to over 160 species of birds and animals. The manager at the time was Stephen McKeown. We're a charitable trust, so we rely on donations, we rely on people coming into the park, 
and on people's general generosity. We have a large collection of model boats, which are in storage, and as much as we love them, we'd be very happy to see them find a new home. Hello. Hello, welcome to Beale Wildlife Park. Will you let us out again now? That's the question. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you. You've picked a good day for us. It's, it's lovely, lovely, yeah. It's Come on in. Big place. 300 acres in 300 total. 300 acres. Drew was to be the first dealer ever to set eyes on the collection of model boats bequeathed to the park in 2018. So, welcome to our tithe barn. Oh, my. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> How many? Between 1,500 and 2,000, we think, but we haven't actually counted them. There are too many, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's proper madness, that this is. Mm. God, there's some so, wonderful things in here. So whose were all these? Well, these belong to Richard Howard, the great-grand-nephew of our founder, and he left them to us in his will to do with what we wanted. Never seen the like. It's pretty impressive, Look isn't at it? it? People say, oh, I've got a collection of boats. I've got six in the shed. Well... That's not a collection. This was a collection. It was incredible. It's not what I expected. This was a collection that knew no, no, no bounds. <laughs> uh, price on that one? 150. Pond yachts and boats are beautiful things, very, very saleable. People love boats. That one's really pretty, isn't it? Now they're a decorative piece, and some of them can be worth tens of thousands of pounds for the rarer ones, because they were built with the same skill as the full-size ones, usually. This particular Edwardian pond yacht was made in England and retained its original paint, rigging and stand. With its four hand-stitched sails, it was worth around 300 pounds. That's quite nice. What's it made out of? It's metal. It's a copper. <laughs> yeah, what a thing. You like it? I think it's great, yeah. yeah. It's a bit of fun, that. What we're about is extraordinary things. And all of a sudden, I was presented with one, and it was this huge-scale um, pond yacht, but it was meant to be a steam... It was a steamboat. But it was all made out of copper and brass, and it was what I would term scratch-built, so it's been made in a shed. So it had a real charm to it, and it must have taken tens of thousands of hours, and he never finished it. But it was extraordinary. This is folk art par excellence. This is as good as it gets. This unusual pond yacht was scratch built from sheet brass and copper, probably in the mid 20th century. Apparently unfinished, it still had a unique appeal and charm and was worth around £1,000. How much would that one be? 250. 200 quid? OK. Deal. I knew it was good, but I didn't realise how good until we got it back to the warehouse. Peanuts, really, for what it was worth, but I was just absorbed by it. I, had, I just kept staring at this thing, going, this is amazing. And there was that one at the back there. You mm -hmm. said, what, 150? Yeah. I'll have that one as well. OK. Can we have a look in here? Yes, of course. The cupboards are full of boats as well. There's something over here I like the look of. Hornby speedboats. Are they clockwork? Yeah. <laughs> How cool is that? So, next up was a, a little gaggle of speedboats, toy shop things, basically. These were in extraordinary condition, original paint. A lot of them were still in the box. Big ones like this. Great. Really, really saleable. That one there, oh, yes. in its original box. It's really, really lovely, isn't it? Look at, this, look at the artwork on that. It's, it's oh, great, isn't it? This collection of vintage Hornby speedboats was made by Meccano Limited in Liverpool in the 1930s. They are showing plenty of playwear, but are still in full working order, complete with their original paint. They were worth around £750. Imagine being a kid getting that. How exciting would you be? I'm excited now. <laughs> I'd like to buy that one. I'd like those three. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? It's beautiful. So streamlined. Yeah. I'd like to buy all of them. I'd like this one, those four, this one in a box. Mm. 500 pounds.
on Salvage Hunters Best Buys, Drew is looking back on some of the most memorable collections he's delved into. Oh my sure, word, yes, yeah. you've got more than a few mates, haven't you? Go on in. At a Berkshire Wildlife Park, he's discovered a boat lover's extraordinary legacy and is bidding for a vintage collection of motorised models. £500. That's it. You've got to leave me a profit in it, otherwise it just ain't worth doing, no matter how interesting they are. OK, 500 Sure? Yep. Deal. Yeah, thank you. Never bought one before in my life. And that's what being a dealer is. I've suddenly presented with something I've never seen before. I've got to make up my mind on the spot what it's worth, what I think it's worth, what, whether I like it, is it saleable, what I can get for it is the most important thing. All of these things, it's, uh, it's, it's, fascinating. it's fascinating and a little terrifying. I think I'm probably done, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I think I'm probably done. We're shipping out. <laughs> <laughs> We're shipping out, too. Yeah. <laughs> Glad, so, spent £500 on the pile of speedboats. I think I paid too much. That's the way it goes. That's all right. You know, it, it's OK. I didn't know anything about them, but I tell you what, if you buy something, you learn quickly. We sold them all. Every single one of them went separately to different collectors. So we did all right in the end, but didn't make a fortune, but we made some money. Beal Park was extraordinary. Again, it, it's unexpected. It's not what you think is going to happen when you wake up in the morning, but it is extremely wonderful when it does happen like this. From rocky shores to rock and roll, Drew's exploration of specialist collections ranges far and wide. So in here we have our school room. Oh, yeah, look at that. And he's always on the lookout for a true connoisseur. So we are off down south to see uh, a guy called Peter Ellis, who isn't a dealer, he's a collector. He found it in Britain's number one music memorabilia specialist, Peter Ellis. I suppose... Formed in 1968, heavy rock band Led Zeppelin are among the most popular and influential of all time. Can't believe you've got that. <laughs> Would you pay 60p to go and see Led Zeppelin? Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows I love music, and I really, really love early rock and roll, all the way through to 70s, you know, rock, glam rock, and everything, everything around that. I did have a problem with Peter because I was just a fan. I, he, I'm lost in Peter's world. Let's be honest, the greatest rock band that's ever been. So to be offered an unused ticket from Nebworth, I've got to have it. Of course I'm going to buy that. If it was 600, I'd have been tempted. It's a wonderful thing. Well, this is a long time ago. This is 40 years, maybe. So people used to send me bags of tickets. This is before people started collecting tickets. Wow. Um, and <clears throat> some of the tickets I bought then for a pound are now worth hundreds of pounds. Peter had the wherewithal, the knowledge and the passion to build up one of the most extraordinary collections I've ever seen. It was, it was extraordinary. I knew them with a load of mates in Nottingham Rock City in the 80s, and I couldn't hear properly for three days. So, yeah, Motorhead is something I really like. Going at 300. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I know, I am that cheeky. <laughs> 370. That's a good deal. Sold. There's no profit left in that. Well, maybe a bit, 50 quid, maybe. But, again, I wanted them for me. I just found a kindred spirit, but with somebody who was in the position to buy whatever he wanted. I was just, I was lucky to be able to be given the, the option to buy something from him. I have to say, one of the best days ever, the reality. A Led Zeppelin ticket, signed Motorhead album, come on, that's a hell of a good day, whichever way you look at it. He had tickets for concerts long gone. It was, it was extraordinary, and he was still passionate. <laughs> uh, I'll always go back to collectors because they'll always have something you haven't seen. They're actually off of a, a railway Pullman carriage. But the really good collectors collect things that are historically important before anybody's realised it and saved them. They understand why this thing will be worth something or important decades before other people do. And, and, it, and if you get in to see these people, you will learn things, you will see wonderful things, and you will walk away.
had damage underneath. But my word, was it attractive, hugely. This 20th century birdbath in an Italian Renaissance manner depicts two putti or cherubim in a seaside tableau perched on the edge of a conch shell. Cast in durable lead, this attractive piece was worth around £1,250. One off, £500. Thank you very much. A bargain. Yep. We did some work to it. It went for just over £1,000 for the thing finished. And garden antiques do this very strange thing. If you buy a really good piece and put it in your garden, it adds to the value of your house. So it's worth a hell of a lot more in your garden for whatever you paid for it. It's a good investment. Bath time. Yeah. Bath night, see? <laughs> Where are we going now? Up here? Yeah. Five minutes from the sculpture park is a separate yard where Eddie stores the stock for one of his other businesses, a collection of old and new bathroom fittings. I like what you've done with the place. <laughs> Ta-da! Lovely. Look at that. Limey. All of the toilets in the world. And he had to walk into this one. Box standard, though, isn't it? <laughs> Bit of a waste. Hey. Eddie is a man of many talents and a, a true dealer, so we go to another property that he owns. And what Eddie done is bought the job lot of stock bathroom wear, but he was making a very nice living out of it. Alongside his sanitary wares, Eddie also stores antiques. A couple of fairground chair boats. Oh, yeah, they're fun. Including a pair of 20th century fairground swing boats. What do you want for those? 